China's blockchain ambitions have come to life on BSN. But as the Chinese blockchain goes overseas, it raises questions. Can you be tracked by it? Data center local in your own system. And those data center software only interact with the chain nodes you install. That's it. It, it doesn't call anything. You know, you, you can check the code. Serving traditional and digital industries one blockchain at a time. Could BSN be the partner of the Chinese central bank digital currency is looking for? Coming up on Word on the Block, Yifan He, founder and CEO of Red Date Technology, dives deep into those topics and a whole lot more. The conversation about Chinese central bank-backed digital currencies powering Chinese cities into the metaverse, talking about digital architecture and what blockchain service network is doing to really build out blockchain for enterprise level activities around the globe. We're talking to somebody who's very closely involved with all of this and giving us a perspective deep in China. Welcome to Word on the Block, the series that takes a deeper dive into blockchain and all the emerging technologies that shape our world at the intersection of business, politics, and economy. It's what we cover right here on Forecast News. I'm Editor-in-Chief Angie Lau. Well, today, part two of a highly anticipated uh, rest of the conversation with Yifan He, founder and CEO of Red Date Technology that's backing BSN, or Blockchain-Based Service Network, in China, and this is the conversation that continues right now. You know, we talked in the early days of BSN, and when when you started to roll that out, there were two very clear paths, right? One for domestic China, which you talked about, and one for the rest of the world. So the rest of the world can still engage in the cryptocurrency if they want, uh, but you've also, interestingly here, forked some uh, permissionless blockchains that, I-, I guess, remove the cryptocurrency uh, gas fee structure and then put in a fiat layer. So that's really interesting. Um, and you're breaking down protocols by the incredible demand internally in China. That's really fascinating to hear. Um, but a lot of people, you know, and I want to address this, uh, with you directly because a lot of people still have this perception of, you know, this is, this is a, a China system, a China, China policy. There's, there's some concerns, obviously. Um, and anonymity is, is one huge concern for blockchain users, especially for permissioned networks, which can theoretically Right, track the activity of their users. And you've, you've said that very specifically domestically in China, because of China policy, you have to be able to do that. But how do you deal with the issue of user anonymity, um, as you launch permissioned and permissionless networks outside of, of China? Um, and the question is, are the users of BSN-based dApps trackable, or can they stay anonymous? How does this differ from your permissioned and permissionless applications? Are rights respected here? Okay, uh, first uh, let me talk about uh, the BSN DDC network inside China, because there's a very complicated law structure, regulation structure inside China to governing the internet. So, so the DDC network, all the blockchain applications on the internet is still under that domain. So, so, uh, 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 some of the regulation actually talk about uh, you need KYC, which means uh, whatever activity, uh, data moves, you need to trace back to who moves that data. Okay. By law. So that's why on DDC network, we need, uh, uh, if, you know, basically make the KYC av- available. And also we can have some kind of, you know, power to uh, disable some wallets. We cannot delay anything on the chain, okay, but we can disable some. So that's by law. We have to do that. Uh, any business inside China building IT infrastructure need to, you know, comply with those laws, no matter how big, you know, the foreign companies, everybody needed to, 
to to do that. But outside China, uh, remember, you know, uh, a BSN is uh, still a commercial project. No matter it's uh, you know the big SOEs involved, the government agency involved, but it's uh, still a commercial project. But with the dream, we can build the next layer of the internet. And and it become eventually become something like the internet. You know, it's uh, we always call the current internet is only serving this kind of private back end systems. And the new second layer of the internet should serve the public IT systems. So that's basically our big, you know, goal. So outside China, we need to follow just like inside China, we need to follow Chinese standards. Then outside China, we definitely need to follow the global uh, international standard. So using Spartan Network anonymously is one of the major major goals, because you know uh, uh, the the first I want to talk about the, it's um, uh, when you use the Spartan Network, it's just like use Ethereum. Which means you don't need to actually go somewhere to register your name, your, you know, who you are, do KYC and using Ethereum. For using Spartan Network, it's the same. You can create your wallet. Then you just uh, uh, find a data center to top up your, your, uh, your wallet with gas credit. Then you can, you know, just connect to the chain, you know, do whatever you want. And uh, but uh, for uh, if you really need to uh, set up your own nodes, which we actually call data center because we have multiple chains. Once the uh, data center can contain many nodes, okay. When you set up a data center, you only need to input an email address. That's it. That's everything we we collect because sometimes we need to let everybody know the security patch, the updates. You know, just you can use a Gmail, Hotmail. We don't care. Okay. Then with the email address, you can, and everything is open source, 100% open source. Even all the smart contract governance and management smart contract are open source. You can check everything. Then you can download the codes, install the data center locally in your own system. And those data center software only interact with the chain nodes you installed. That's it. It, it doesn't call anything. You know, you, you can check the codes. And uh, then, you need for data center owners, they need actually, uh, you know, purchase the NTT. So, 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 so when they purchase the NTT, we give them choices with USDC to purchase, which means they can just, it's Polygon, the USDC on Polygon. So they can go to Polygon to have their USDC transferred to our, uh, you know, Spartan Networks USDC account. And uh, with their chain account, with their wallet on Spartan, then we automatic, uh, automatically, you know, detect that uh, Spartan network NTT wallet address, and then we receive the USDC. Then we top up the, their uh, uh, NTT wallet with NTT. So everything is anonymous. <laughs> so so there's no way we know who you are, and and uh, especially with the uh, end user. You know, we, we actually consider the data center owners, operators are our direct customer, right? Then their end user have nothing to do with us. We, we have no idea. We, we only know, and it's public information, how many wallets on the chain. Okay, that's it. So, so it could be, for example, a small cloud services provider in Europe. They say, oh, Spartan sounds very good. We check the codes, we review everything, it's fine. So let's set up a small data center. It only costs like $200 to each month to set up the data center. So then we will actually, you know, open up the Spartan access point to my own cloud services, you know, customers. So on our interface, we added like a, you know, Spartan access. Then you click, you you pay, you know, with the, uh, uh, your credit card to the cloud service provider and get the gas credit and and your searching. So it become part of. But all those users actually belong to this cloud service provider. We have no idea who they are. Who we only deal with the data center operators. Who is also we only know a email address. <laughs> so so that's basically how we set this up. It's it's highly controversial, as you can imagine, to have public blockchains that are cryptoless, that you've re actually removed a big, powerful incentivization for that ecosystem 
to be able to conduct business in crypto, and you've actually removed that, uh, why do you why do you believe that crypto has no future? Why are you removing it? I mean, you're you're really kind of making a huge bet in in non crypto blockchains. Uh, because personally, uh, you know, I, I was a private equity investor for ten years, so uh, I kind of don't believe in cryptocurrency as a viable investment vehicle. Okay, uh, because it doesn't link to any production, any products, any you know, <laughs> real world, you know, assets. So, so uh, that's why personal, I don't believe in that. That's first. Okay, even though I have many many crypto you know, currency friends, you know, but I never had, you know, have a wallet, <laughs> you know, which means if someone said, okay, I, I want to give you 100 Bitcoin, I, I, I don't even know how to receive that. So, but, but also what I can see here is it already been proven in past 10 years. No traditional IT system will use public chain with cryptocurrency on layer one. No one will use it. It's, it's proven. Okay, if if you see some bank use some Ethereum, uh, uh, Ethereum check their application. It's just for testing. You know, it's a uh, very small with ten transactions in. So so I don't see any massive application from traditional IT industry. You know wh why? Because cryptocurrency. Because we, uh, it's always think about the cryptocurrency is just uh, one single application built on based on the blockchain technology. It's not blockchain technology. Why we, you know, without this application, we use pure block, blockchain technology to, to serve cheaply and easily other IT industries. So that's basically the goal of BS, you know, to, 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 to go beyond cryptocurrency. But help me out, help me understand then. There's a lot of work that still needs to be done with blockchain. If I'm using this layer one protocol, okay? So I'm using, let's say, Ethereum, for example, and mm. I'm asking it to do some serious heavy lifting for us mm. from an enterprise perspective, right? People still need, need to be incentivized. So if you're artificially reducing the payment of people who are actually doing the work on the back end on the blockchain, to, you know, you know, from three to one, even though the market is demanding much more, um, doesn't that mean that as more people are crowding into, let's say, a, a very affordable, uh, blockchain version of, 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 you know, what you've, you've created, but if there is no, 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 uh, monetary incentivization, no monetary support through cryptocurrency, wh where's the incentivization for all of those people to do POS or POW, um, the people who actually need to create those blocks uh, that, that, you know, enterprises are depending on, on the back end? How does that work? Okay. Uh, for for, for uh, enterprises, when they use, uh, you know, uh, 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 blockchain technology, Let's say not just for cryptocurrency. So, so basically they just want to, you know, do some uh, IT transactions, handle some IT procedures, process. Okay. Just remember right now, 99.9999% of the IT industry or companies are using centralized system like uh, AWS, Google and uh, Microsoft. Okay. 99%, even 85 of public nodes are installed in those three big clubs. Why? Remember, there's no incentive for them and they are paying those three companies. <laughs> why? Are they crazy? Why, why they just go to public chains and get the incentive, get paid for using the public chains? The logical still is, so for so many IT industry, they have their own business, you know, not have nothing to do with cryptocurrency and they are willing to pay for services, not get incentive to do some work. Okay. So, so those two are totally different industry for cryptocurrency. When you do work, you are not do real work. You do some work for the cryptocurrency ecosystem. 
when I'm talking about the four people shipping, you know, merchandise overseas to 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 produce cars to run the traditional banking, uh, you know, process. Why they even need this kind of, you know, the universal consensus based, the cryptocurrency based, the public chains. They just willing to pay for good services and, uh, you know, run as a result. That's why for a centralized uh, environment like AWS, which controlled by one single company, millions of companies paying them a lot of money just to have the infrastructure. <laughs> so, so BS and Spartan Network is just like AWS. I always call that a decentralized AWS, which means whoever come here, set up the data center because they have business needs. No one just come here to set up a business center just for receiving the incentive. But we also have incentive programs on Spartan Network, but it's different philosophies. For cryptocurrency, you do some work, you get the incentive. But for Spartan Network, it's whoever come here, you have business needs. We can actually, we are, the, the purpose of our incentive programs is not for you to make money, but for you to reduce cost. That's what they care about. So, so our incentive program is no matter how much money you spend last month, we gave you like a 20% 30% back. It's like the royalty points of shopping malls and the airplanes. You know, you go there, spend more money, then you get more money back. <laughs> so, so, so this is totally different philosophy. It's one is you do some work, you can, you, you making money. Here is you spend money. Yes, you spend money, fulfill your business needs, but then you can get some back when you're spending more. So, so it's, it's just, Trades, yeah, BS and Spartan Network as a, as a as a decentralized cloud services. I, I, I right. get it. I mean, you know, roughly, and and I and and whether you know you you agree, it's really it sounds like you know for the layer one in cryptocurrency, you are incentivizing for mass. What you specifically are doing at BSN and Spartan, BSN and DDC, is incentivizing for enterprise. So two very different gamification models yes. and incentivization yes. models designed for two very different audiences. Okay, I get it. Let's take a quick break, Yifan. There's so, there's so much more. Um, but I, <laughs> I, 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 we could go on, but, um, we definitely want to talk about the synergies that we're seeing between BSN and the Digital Yuan project and more to come out of China. And I want you to tell me exactly what more with Yifan when we return. Word on, on Word on the Block. On the other side, tech innovations we'll see from China in the new year. If you don't understand the future, you'll never see your place in it. Introducing Forecast Plus, covering all things blockchain, independent reporting, insights, and access from Asia to the world. We cut through the noise where technology, insights, and access meet where smart conversations happen. Make friends with disruption. Forecast Plus. All right, we are back with Yifan He. And uh, Yifan, we've been talking about CBDCs. We've been talking about the ECNY. Uh, and China's at the forefront of CBDC development with the digital yuan being piloted across more than 20 cities across the country. Um, how, how are you involved in the development of ECNY? And, uh, are you planning for BSN to leverage the D, the digital yuan or for payments in the future instead of the NTT? Would we see a digital yuan? Uh, in fact, integrated into the domestic version of BSN in China? Uh, first, uh, for now, uh, the BSN and the, the digital yuan are two separated yes. uh, projects. Mm -hmm. Okay, Nothing, those two are not related in any ways. But the uh, digital yuan project is uh, massive. Okay, very smart. Okay, I, I talked to people there, you know, we, we discuss things, but it's, it's a really smart project and they actually taking very steady steps, you know, to, to do this. They, they don't rush, which I really, really admire. Okay. Uh, but right now it's still in the halfway. 
Okay, it's not a full central bank digital currency we talked about. Because、uh, right now, if you want to use the digital yuan, you still need to go through a commercial bank. So, so, so the wallet you receive is actually sits with the bank, not really the central bank digital currency system yet. So, so right now for end user, you know, so some of、uh, the end user say, okay, when I use the、uh, digital yuan, it's no different from the WeChat Pay and Alipay, you know, because you know it's 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 just a special commercial bank account. So,、uh, but but if you see from beginning to today, it's already big big step because right now the the uh, uh, the structure is more like、uh, you know individual cannot open their own、uh, wallet directly in the central bank digital uh, uh, digital currency system, which is centralized system. Okay, it's not、uh, decentralized. But the big banks actually open up the big wallets. You know, then they have you know digital currency. Within the big wallet, then within the bank si- banking system, they actually allow user to open up the bank related wallet. Then they they divide the big wallet into the smaller ones.、Uh, but right now, the the the, the individual wallet is controlled by the bank, not the digital currency system. Of course, it need to be verified by the、uh, central digital currency system. So the、uh, the director of the uh, of the uh, digital yuan project actually talk about begin to talk about smart contract. Okay, they will set set up some kind of smart contract. Uh, you know, system for people actually or companies actually can deploy smart contract into the system. It, it it could be still within the banking system. Okay, I think because right now there's no not much detail, but it it probably deployed within the each commercial bank, and that become a script can be triggered and somehow you know control in a certain level you can have control over your own. Accounts. It's a big step, but you can see the steps. You know, small steps. You know, once in a while, but it's really toward a well-built central bank digital currency system. Eventually, each individual will have their own wallets. You know, it will be.、Uh, when that happens, then there's a question where it will be circulated. You know how to manage those wallets, everything. So at that time, I think you know the issuing is always centralized, but the circulation could be a decentralized network, everything. So so、uh, I I think uh, uh, when we reach、uh, that time,、uh, BSN is definitely one of the choices. You know、uh, to to integrate digital yuan to somehow manage their individual wallets. You know for the. Individuals or companies to use smart contracts to somehow you know to 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 manage their wallets. So, but、uh, we still have a, a a long way to go. I think you know to to reach that point. But、uh, right now, I think the, the the steps are really really good. Okay, every single step, I say, okay, this is smart. This is the the right thing to do. It, it, it's been clear to us from day one、uh, when we started forecast in two thousand and eighteen. That that the innovations that we were seeing out of China were significant and、uh, notable, and that remains true with this conversation. What can we expect from China in 2023? I think we will see、uh, first a lot of improvements on the central bank digital currency. Okay, you will see some really amazing user cases and、uh, a lot of industry. Will begin to adopt the central bank digital currency uh, because uh, 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 besides the technical, you know, uh, uh, improvements over the time, th- there's also the the monetary policies because right now the central bank digital currency in China is considered M zero, which is cash. So so it's really hard for the enterprise. To trans to use digital yuan to pay each other in millions, <laughs> right? So I I think that will also change in if not this year in next two years, you know, it it will move, you know, which means the enterprise can open up digital yuan accounts and 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 transfer like a, a la- larger amount of money. So I think the central bank digital currency will. Move in a very smooth way <laughs> this year, and we will see a lot of changes here.、Uh, secondly, is、uh, we also will see the、uh, blockchain technology because there's new frameworks coming out of China. 
you know, like the chain maker, like uh, Facebook because becomes stronger, you know, uh, and uh, those chains because like uh, B BS and DDC network, they actually handle a lot of transactions, <laughs> you know, the, their framework, but uh, but uh, I, I think uh, they all, including Unchain from uh, Ungroup, right, they, they actually slowly will also move to international market. Okay, I talk some of them, you know, they all see eventually as a pure technology. They they want to open source and go internationally. Uh, and also uh, in China this year, I think you you guys will see some amazing user cases based on the permission, the open permission version of, you know, those public chains. Uh, uh, because we are this year, we already see some you know very nice one like uh, like uh, you know there's a local government okay very very remote <laughs> local government uh, the, the uh, seventy percent of their uh, uh, city is basically covered by forest okay so so uh, uh, because right now they need to calculate the carbon credit for for, for from each tree they actually. Planning actually is building, you know, use NFT technology to representing each tree, and uh, and each tree actually they have a inventory control. I don't know how, but but it's millions of trees. They actually know each tree how uh, uh, you know how much they grow each year this year, and and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, you know how big the tree is, what kind of tree it is. Then they, for each NFT, they track this for next ten years. Then when you Calculate the carbon. You actually have very credible records for each tree on public record and for the past ten years. I mean, how is it for any firm to do audit? <laughs> but can you yeah. imagine all the accountants that would actually need to happen in real life? Yes. Uh, that that's the promise of of blockchain technology. What's fascinating about this conversation, Yifan, is that blockchain and enterprise use is being stress tested with those 1300 companies that are currently using BSN uh, DDC internally domestically in China. You have bigger volumes, bigger transaction volumes than global transaction volumes on the Ethereum network in China alone. Uh, you're stress testing it to enterprise grade. That's just going to be really, really interesting for an international community, especially with the international version of this product. Um, we're, we're fascinated to learn more about it. Thank you so much. I know we're going to have you back. You're going to tell us more about it in 2023, all the new developments. We're going to be keeping a very close eye. Uh, but certainly you have become a, a controversial uh, a figure in, in the crypto world by being very anti crypto. Um, but you've, you've made your case today, uh, from an enterprise point of view. And I appreciate, I really appreciate you spending time with us. Uh, also, I really appreciate for you gave me the opportunity to explain. This is actually pretty complicated matter. <laughs> yeah. It's complicated. This is what we do at forecast. We unpack it give uh, our audience access to understanding uh, with better clarity and instead of just the very, you know, short headlines that most of us are inundated with. So, so thank you for that today, Yifan. We really appreciate it. And thank you everyone for joining us on this latest episode of Word on the Block. I'm Angie Lau, Editor-in-Chief of Forecast. Until the next time. <laughs>